How many radios can you use with one power supply? Can you put a tuner in line with an ATOS antenna? What are some tips and tricks for busting a pileup with only 100 watts? We're answering these questions today on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? My name is Mike. Thanks for tuning in. If you've got a question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at iCloud.com. Just put Mailbag Monday in the subject. Guys, we got three questions for you. Let's dive right in. Question one is talking, how many radios can you connect to one power supply? I currently have four radios connected to an Alinko DM330MV. Granted, I do not transmit on all of them at the same time, but I may be transmitting on two at once. So he's talking about this Alinko DM330MVT, which looks to be a 32 amp power supply. So you've got a good supply there and really, you, you kind of need to think of how much your total current draw is going to be. So technically, the answer is uh, you've got a 32 amp power supply. Well, if I were to take 32 Yesu 891s, they draw about one amp on receive. I could power 32 of them. The problem is the second I go to key up with one, now I'm <laughs> pulling more current than the, the power supply can supply. So that's not good. So you really need to take into account how much current your radios are going to be drawing if they're all simultaneously transmitting. So say, for example, you're on sideband with the with a ICOM 7300. Uh, probably your max currents that you're going to pull at 100 watts probably going to be around maybe 13, 14 amps. So technically, you could have two of those on sideband running full bore 100 watts uh, all the time, no problem at all. Uh, you could probably also have a third, maybe VHF, UHF radio as like a talk-in frequency, maybe if it's like field day or something. Uh, so, so you might could get away with that, but if you're transmitting on all three of them at once, that might not be a bad idea. Uh, now, when you get to CW, that's a little bit different story. For, so, for example, I have uh, a Yesu 30 amp power supply, and uh, when I have the ICOM 7610 on, we're pulling about... Eh, two and a half, three amps with all the gear turned on here. So when I key down 100 watts CW, now I'm pulling about 19 amps. So that's way more than the 30 amps supplied if I had two of these hooked up. So you really wanna take into consideration the mode, the duty cycle, uh, all that stuff. So, I mean, basically just do a test uh, at home or before you go out or whatever the case is. Key down on CW, you know, maybe maybe key up on sideband and just give a good old whistle into the microphone to get some modulation there and and look at how much current you're drawing and use that as your basis of comparison. But typically, two or three radios would probably be the max that you'd you'd want to be uh, powering with the power supply and actually running at the same time. So good question, and uh, don't don't hurt your equipment. <laughs> Thanks for writing in. Next, we've got a cool question, kind of dual use for his radio this viewer is writing i have an off the wall question i'm building a portable box that will house an ft891 and an mfj 939 and i'd like to be able to use this as a temporary drop-in mobile setup with the atos 128 however as the atos tuning involves dc voltage on the coax to drive the motor i'm wondering what would happen if the tuner was still in line but bypassed while using the atos tuner mode on the 891 Given you featured all three of these pieces of equipment on your channel, I was wondering if you have any experience using this combination and if presented any problems. Well, no, I don't have any experience uh, using this, but I'm kind of curious, so let's hop outside and find out. All right, so we've got our 939 tuner. We've got uh, the body of our Yesu using the, the uh, cable to connect them so we don't need a, an, ex, an extra power cable. So we're just going to connect this to the radio here. I'll go ahead and unscrew the ATOS cable. And then we'll plug in the tuner here. And then in the back of the tuner, we'll plug the antenna, the ATOS, into the antenna port. And if the radio's on, it'll power your tuner. Now, to bypass this, we should just be able to push the tune button once really quickly and we should hear a beep. I find it's kind of hit or miss on this. There we are. So this should be in bypass mode now. So let's see what happens 
when we try and tune up the ATOS with that in bypass and powered on. So right now the antenna is tuned for 20 meters. But if we push the tune button, that's going up. Doesn't know what the heck it's doing. But hear that? The antenna tuner just kicked in, even though it's in bypass. So that shouldn't happen. Let's try a different frequency. See, the tuner is just doing the matching for us and the ATOS isn't doing anything. So that's kind of weird. So bypassing it doesn't really look like it bypasses it. So if we just turn this off, what'll happen now? Let's find out. Now, if we try and tune the same frequency, nothing happens. Why not? Because it thinks it's already tuned. So let's go to a different band tune up and our antenna is freaking out because it doesn't know where it is but that's fine it, it does this whole like I need to initialize thing so we'll just wait a minute for it to stop freaking out and now that it's done initializing sometimes it does it I mean this may or may not happen to you but it's working now the antenna is going down and it is tuning with the antenna tuner in line but off so there you go let's try another band there we are, it's going down. And just for giggles, let's turn that uh, tuner back on and see what happens. I don't know why it's doing this, it should be in bypass, but who knows. So let's turn it back on. So one beep should be bypass. Two beeps should be on. <laughs> uh, sometimes MFJ is not so on the ball there, but it doesn't look like we're going to get two beeps there. Let's try it one more time just for giggles. This will probably break ham radio, but yeah, let's go to 10 meters. And there, yeah, you can see the, the automatic tuner is kicking right in. So can't use it with it on, but you can use it with it off. And there you have it. Didn't break anything, no magic smoke came out. It worked. Uh, I don't know why the bypass on my tuner is kind of wonky. You should just hit the tune button once and it should beep once and hit it again and it should beep twice. But uh, yeah, just turn it off, you'll be just fine. Thanks for writing in. Last one is something I haven't experienced much lately because I'm on the receiving end, but this viewer is asking, I've been pulling in some killer stations on the upper bands from Brazil to South America, that's awesome. Problem is I can't get through the pileups with my 100 watts against the guys with a seven element beam and legal limit power. So I guess my question is twofold. First, do you have techniques for busting pileups? Secondly, any info or recommendations or resources for amplifiers? So I'll answer that one first. I am not the guy to talk about amplifiers. I, I really don't have any experience with them. Uh, pretty much all I know is that Josh uses an Ameritron 811 and uh, he seems to be pretty happy with it. Uh, maybe, maybe it's the 811H, I feel. And uh, N5SKT Don uh, can't shut up about the Mirage amp, I believe it is. <laughs> uh, but here's, here's the challenge for everyone. Those, those of you guys with amplifiers, put your suggestions in the comments, and that way you can scroll down and read and, and kind of see what the community has to say and, and uh, feels about different amps. And, and also leave comments about maybe amps to stay away from. That would be very helpful. So for the first part of your question, for me, the biggest and most important thing, and I know a lot of guys, not a lot, but some guys aren't doing this, is listen, listen, listen. And when you've listened enough, listen some more. You want to get the cadence of the cue. So how is this guy uh, kind of calling CQ and, and doing his pile up? Because it's kind of, you know, everybody does it a little bit different. Some guys are just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Some guys will have a little bit of a chat uh, with each individual. Uh, some guys will call QRZ. Some guys will just kind of say 73 and let the floodgates open. So you kind of want to feel the rhythm of the cue so first. Definitely make sure you know the guy's call sign first. Every now and again, someone comes back to me and they're like, what's your call sign? I'm like, why are you even calling me if you don't know my call sign? It's kind of, you know, DX code of conduct uh, number one. Once you've established kind of the cadence of it, I'm kind of, let's try and get in really early. So the second I hear him say QRZ, I'm throwing out my call sign. 
And I, you want to make sure you're using standard NATO phonetics. Don't get cute with it. So Kilo 8 Mike Romeo Delta. Say it quick enough to get through, but not so fast as to where it's a garbled mess. Listen for dead air. If if uh, the QSO is over, they're saying 73, but he hasn't said QRZ yet. Maybe he's taking a drink of water. Or maybe he's uh, looking at his watch or his phone or something. Throw your call sign out before anyone else does. Jump at that opportunity. You got you to gotta kind of take advantage of any opportunity you can. One thing that uh, Sterling N0SSC mentioned on, on one of Josh's streams the other day, they were talking about this exact subject, and I thought this was a really good idea is maybe say the first part of your call sign right away. So like Kilo 8, wait a couple seconds, Mike Romeo Delta. Uh, that could be su successful. I've not tried that, but that was another tip. Uh, some guys like to be late bloomers and come in at the very end. There, There is definitely a lot of people that, that hit you hard and fast right at the beginning of your QRZ. And for me on the receiving end, uh, you don't, you're not always going to get like who's calling first. Uh, so usually it's kind of the guys in the middle or or guys that are kind of making their call sign uh, stand out a little bit. And that could simply be how they're call, throwing their call sign out. Uh, some guys kind of wait till the tail end and throw their call sign in there. Uh, there's there's really so many different ways you can get into a pileup. Another great thing is. Uh, if if they're asking for QRP guys only, this is a sneaky one. Turn your power down. Try try hitting them with five watts. You're gonna have a lot less competition because all those guys are are 1500 watts and they're not thinking. Well, shoot, I'm not getting into this pileup. But he's only asking for QRP stations. Turn your radio's power down. <laughs> now you're QRP, and you could get in a lot easier. That's uh, that's a sneaky that's a sneaky little trick there. Check your transmit audio quality. Is it too bassy? You know, how's the EQ? You kind of want a little bit more mids and highs than you do the bass to kind of punch through. Also, look at turning on your compression. That's going to kind of squash the signal down and, and just put more power to where it needs to be. So there's certain things you can do with just your radio setting to make that happen. And finally, just persistence. You know, there's... You're, you're with 100 watts competing against some of these big stations. It's like you're whispering and everyone else is screaming. So sometimes it does take a while. So use different techniques when you're trying to get into this uh, station. I've only got 100 watts. I've worked all kinds of DX. And you need to be persistent and just keep throwing your call sign out. If it's, if it's a call you really want, you know, try different techniques. Uh, some guys... I'm not sure how I feel about this practice, but some guys will only throw out the last part of their call sign. Mike Romeo Delta, Mike Romeo Delta. I'm not a big fan of guys repeating their call signs. Uh, sometimes I will ignore them. Uh, I just, I think it's rude personally. Throw your call sign out once. Use good etiquette, good manners. We want to be good stewards of the hobby. And, uh, you know, if, if you use best practices, you, you should be able to get in there. Uh, and if all else fails, just go to Tim Duffy's station and uh, you just want to use one of his towers. I'm kidding. <laughs> but really, persistence, persistence, persistence uh, would be my biggest advice for you. So great question. Again, I'm going to call on the guys in the comments. What are your thoughts? What are your ways of busting a pile up with only 100 watts? And, and we're not changing antennas. We're not putting up Yaggies. We're, you know, kind of this is this is the station I got. What can I do to bust this pile up? I want to hear what your guys comment are on this so great great question thanks for writing in and i hope you do get uh a little bit more success in busting those great dx contacts i i know it is it is super exciting for me and hopefully it will be for you too so that wraps up another mailbag monday thanks so much for everyone for writing in again if you have an amateur radio related question write me an email k8mrd at icloud.com put mailbag monday in the subject and your question may be featured on another episode of k and mrd radio stuff and in the meantime don't forget to like share subscribe follow me on twitter at k8mrd and we will see you again on another episode of k and mrd radio stuff 73 guys